In the last video, we had derived these relations concerning the different forms for, uh, for the Laplace transform of the direct delta function. If it's just this, then it's a very simple expression. And if it's the Laplace transform of just delta t, where a is 0, then we have e to the 0. That's just 1. And if we multiply some function by the Dirac delta function, and then take the Laplace transform of this entire expression, we derived this equation. Um, in this video, we just want to take a few moments and work through some examples uh, using these formulas. Uh, before we do that, just to remind you, the, our playlist for the videos on differential equations is at the website at digital dash university dot org. Let's uh, let's consider this problem. Suppose we have the Laplace transform, say of t cubed times the Dirac delta function of t minus sixteen. So in this problem, A equals 16. So it will equal f of A. f is t cubed. A is 16. So that will equal 16 cubed times e to the minus 16 S. That's all there is to it. Let's um, just take a couple of more examples. These will all be very straightforward. There shouldn't be any difficulty in dealing with them. Suppose we have, say, the Laplace transform of the sine of 3 t, and then we have the Dirac delta function, t minus pi over 2. So for this problem, a is pi over 2. f of t, of course, is the sine of 3t. And this will equal not f of t, but f of a, where a is pi over 2. So this will equal the sine of 3 pi over 2. And then we have e to the minus pi over 2 times s. And this is negative 1, so we could write negative 1 in here. Or just do it like this. So the Laplace transform of the sine of 3t multiplied by this direct delta function is just minus e to the minus pi over 2 uh, times s. Let's consider maybe. Suppose we have the Laplace transform of, say, the hyperbolic cosine of, say, 7 halves t. And let's say it's the direct delta function of t. So for this problem, a equals 0. So this would equal the hyperbolic, co f of t is the hyperbolic cosine of 7 halves t. Here it's f of a, where a is 0. So that's the hyperbolic cosine of 0 times e to the 0. And this is 1, 
is this is 1 and the hyperbolic cosine of 0 is 1. So Laplace transform of this hyperbolic cosine times delta t that is just equal to 1. So as you can see these are all very straightforward um, and it was not difficult um, deriving these formulas. We did that in the, uh, the last video. Let's consider suppose that we are taking the Laplace transform not of delta t minus a, but of this multiplied by some constant. So the Laplace transform of that following our definition will equal the integral. That's a constant, so we can leave this to the outside. Then delta t minus a e to the minus st dt. And of course, this part right here, as we derived in the last video, that's just e to the minus sa. And we have that constant there. So the direct delta function of t minus a is this. If it's multiplied by a constant, it would just be k times that. So let's consider this problem. Suppose we have a series of impulses. This can be t. This can be f of t. And we have, say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so forth. Um, let's say here we have an impulse. Yeah, let's label these. Say at time t equal 1, here's an impulse. And let's say at... 3, there's another impulse, but it's like this. And let's say this is times, it's going down because it's multiplied by, say, minus 17 over 2. Let's get it in focus. And then let's say here we have another impulse time t equals 6, and that's multiplied by 58, say, over 47. What would be the Laplace transform of these series of impulses? So here we would have, just adding them up, f of t, for here, that is just 1 times the Dirac delta function of t minus 1 for right here. Then we would have minus 17 over 2 times the Dirac delta function of t minus 3. It occurred at time of t equals 3. Then we would have plus 58 over 47 times the direct delta function of t minus 6. So here's our f of t that describes these three impulses that occur at time of 1, 3, and 6. And you can multiply um, the impulse function by some constant, and it can change the direction of it as we show here. Now what we want to do is find 
the Laplace transform of this. So remembering now that the Laplace transform of a constant, well let's just write it out, the Laplace transform of a constant just equals the constant e to the minus as. Here our constant is just 1, so this will equal a equals 1, so it's going to be 1 e to the minus s. Then here k is minus 17 over 2. A is 3, so this would be e to the minus 3s plus k here is 58 over 47. A is 6, so e to the minus 6s. So here's f of t the Laplace transform of it is this expression. And again, that should be pretty um, straightforward. Using all these formulas is, um, shouldn't give you any difficulty. It's just a matter of working through some examples. Now, what we'll do in the next video is consider some of the more um, mathematical properties of the Dirac delta function. In fact, the Dirac delta function is an even function. And again, we'll discuss that uh, in the uh, upcoming videos.